Hello and welcome to the Gangnam Curling Center. It's the final session of the fourth Paralympic wheelchair curling event. Going head to head in the gold medal game is world champions Norway and 2022 hosts China. Neither country has ever won a Paralympic curling medal. However, they both have one in the bank already here at the PyeongChang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. It's been a thoroughly entertaining and high quality event. And all that's left is to sort out who takes the gold and who takes the silver. Logan Gray here, two-time Olympian from the USA and Swiss, and Swiss Helm alongside. So let's meet the Chinese team led by Wang Meng. This team, the youngest team in the, the event by some way. Ways. This is Liu Wei, the second player for China. The third player, Chen Tanshin. <laughs> and then the skip and fourth player, Wang Hai Tao. Thrilled to get their first Norway. Paralympic medal Norway. here already, but wanting to go for gold. And on the other side Cecil of the Norway. ice, Team Norway led off by Cecil Loken. At second, Hi. Ole Frederick Sieversen. Third stones and vice skip, Justin Stordahl. And the skip, thrower of the last rock, Rune Lorenzen. Thumbs up. Plenty of support in for both nations. Norway, the reigning world champions who won the 2017 event here in Gagnon Curling Center. That's how they got to the final Norway, defeating Republic of Korea in an extra end and China beating Canada with an amazing final stone. Canada, they've got the bronze medal. They defeated the hosts, Korea. This is their journey to getting here. China only dropping two games, one to Canada and one to Korea. They managed to get their own back on Canada in the semi-finals though. That's Bandaby, the mascot. And this is their tournament accuracies. The highest in the tournament for all of these players. They really have made a ridiculous amount of shots. And that's very much their strength. The Norwegian's a bit more wily. They had a bit of a struggle of a start, as you can see, dropping their first three games and then coming on strong. The experience of Rune Lorentzen, their leader, showing his tactics, helping lead this team into the gold medal final. They might not have had the best statistics throughout the week, but they knew which shots to make and when to set themselves up for a climb to the top of the podium. Yeah, the Paralympic medal was the only one missing from the collection for Rune Lorentzen and Justine Sturdal. They've had fantastic careers and they've already said they're over the moon to how they have a Paralympic medal. Anything else would be a bonus. Silver already safe, but you know what? There's no point in just settling for that. You can lay it all out there for two and a half hours and try and get that gold medal. Yeah, yeah and the most unique delivery in the competition, Cecil Lotion. She lines up directly in front, the edge of the cue right on her chin, wraps her hand around, gets the rock going, and by virtue of their higher placing out of the round Little. robin, China has the hammer in this final game. Nope. 
and the hammer we'll talk about a lot. It's the last rock of each end. It is a valuable stone, and so is that. What a start for Norway. Yeah, that's a good one to get under her belt. You kind of worry that you go out there and the nerves will be a little bit too much and you won't be able to find your draw weight oh. as a lead, but Cecil Lawkins made the perfect start. This is Wang Meng. Oh. Hey. He throws the lead Laya. stones from China Laya. and listen to them go, go, yelling go, go. the stone down the ice. Go, go, go. They have such an energy, go. this team from the People's Republic of China. They, you will hear them the entire game. They take such a commanding presence out there on the ice. For being young, for having this be one of their uh, first opportunities and truly their first opportunity for a medal at the Paralympic Games. It, it's like they've been here many times. Well, Cecil Lukin has been here before, playing in her second Paralympic Games and first one being in Sochi. Yeah, she was named to the national team. She made her international debut in 2012 for Norway. She curls out of the Stravanger Curling Club. I'm not quite making it into the rings and China won't be able to remove that stone. That's not a bad play for Norway. We have seen this Chinese team make takeout after takeout. Their game plans have been pretty consistent all week. They love to knock rocks out of play. But based on the free guard zone rule, they have got to switch to the draw or the touch shot tactic. Go, 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 go. Going to try and hide this running stone behind the Norwegian stone in front of the ring. Well, curling hard now. And it's going to over curl into the guard. And that's something that we didn't really see Canada do in the semi final. Yeah, Canada was very defensive against China. We're waiting for China to make a mistake. Uh, they didn't force the issue, I think, early enough in the in the game. This is the most experienced skip in the game in Team Norway's leader. He's not going to be afraid to mix it up and have Ole Frederick Siversen come right around the Chinese stone that was left on the center line. Yeah, Ole Frederick actually started because he was invited to have a go by Rooney, the, the skip. He's also recruiting for some teammates to go to these international championships and he's performed extremely well yeah. so far. Unfortunately, there just a little bit too much momentum. This is his first Paralympic Games. Uh, he was not on the team in Sochi in 2014. So uh, he needs a maybe a deep breath before his next rock. So this is Leo Wei who throws oh. second stones oh. for China. Jing oh. Shuang Yue oh. is his oh. sporting oh. hero. Oh. And is also oh. the coach. Uh, Yue won the bronze medal at the 2010 Olympic Games and the World Championship here in Gangneung in 2009. And he has played a peach. What a start. A great first rock. Absolutely perfectly placed into the forefoot. That tight measurement in the center of the rings right behind a guard. So Severson trying to chip the guard off here. Perfect for Just pushes that right into the house and that could be useful for China. A little oh kicker on the side there. Oh, that's, that's their second point. Oh. Yeah, that might have been uh, a, a pretty tragic mistake for Norway in this opening end. They do not have the last rock. 
got caught between shots there a little bit, I think. Oh, Needed a little more weight for the peel. They might have played the other side if it was just the straight peel. Oh, the shooter would punch their own rock in. Oh, 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 oh. The guards here. All of these Chinese players coming from Harbin in the northeast of China. And he's played a freeze onto that stone at the top of the forefoot. Good shot. Yeah, now if Norway could, you know, they might they might go for the double and the roll, but getting right to the face of that top stone, sit there. They don't need to be shot right now. Um, might be able to force China into a tough situation. Houston Stordahl. He can throw the big weight necessary for double takeout. <laughs> Nearly makes that hit and stick on the nose, but just rolls far enough that China can remove that stone. And with a good hit and a roll, they could tuck this one underneath the yellow stone on the left. This is our first look at Chen Janshin. 67% for all games this far. Left-hander. Probably the weak link in the semi-final, so he just needs to, to lift his game a little bit. And he just chips it out of there and Almost. preserves two redstones. Almost creates a complete disaster on that one. Just catches his own stone on the top of the forefoot. Ricochets off, out of play. Well, Justine Stordahl, he's, uh, he's the most experienced player in the field. He's won more medals than anybody at the World Wheelchair Championships. Three golds, one silver and one bronze. And he's competed in eight Paralympic Games now. Three winter and five summer. Four, four sailing and one powerlifting for the summer games, but never medaled until now. I think even he might be feeling a little bit of pressure out there today. Makes a good hit and stick there, though. Oh. Oh. So these athletes set themselves. The idea is that their chair must be stationary. Their feet have to be off the ice. They want to be clearly lined up behind the rock. All of the motion comes from their upper body out through the delivery stick and into the rock in a steady manner. And just like that, you get a hit, you get a roll. Great shot for China. Moving with purpose, Chen. China looking good for a score of two here in the first end. But here comes Rune Lawrenson, plays out of the Halden Curling Club, three-time world champion. Also was part of the European champions for uh, Team Para Table Tennis in 1999. Yeah, these are all around talented athletes that are out here. Rune also played in every single Paralympic games 2006 in torino italy 2010 in vancouver canada 2014 in sochi and here he is in pyeongchang about to win his first medal he'd love for it to be gold he, he did say that he is thrilled to have secured the medal after so many years of work He would have maybe scripted this opening end a little bit differently. A couple of nice shots from the Chinese skip to open. 
will set China up for a two-point lead. Wang Hai Tao, the skip and fourth player for China, the 28-year-old, very young team. This Leo Wei, the second player, is the oldest player, 33. They play these takeouts very hard, but they're very accurate as well. And he makes a stinger of a hit and roll there. Forces Norway into the other side of the ice, an inside out hit. They haven't seen this. And all of a sudden the two could be three. Oh, the wise skip from the other end. Let's play the open one where we know where to put the broom down on the edge of the ice, where we have confidence. The steely-eyed Norwegian. His last rock here in the gold medal game in this first end. Well, he would love to get a little bit of a roll inside here. He's looking wide at the moment, though. Has he got it? Oh, he's missed completely. And China have a draw to the paint for three. Can you believe it? It's a great call there by Lawrenson, but fresh air on the outside. Yeah, a complete disappointment in, in not being able to make any contact whatsoever. And this man has had several of these shots throughout the tournament, these open draws. He has very consistently made his opposition pay for giving him the opportunity. Oh, Wong Hai Tao must think all of his Christmases have come at once right now. Just needs to draw one into the house. And they're encouraging it to get down there. Has it got the run running to do it? Gotta go, gotta go. It's short. What a let off for Norway. After that huge miss by Rooney Lawrenson, Wang Hai Tao can't convert. Still getting the high fives though. And still a strong start for China. Score of two in the first end. They lead Norway by two shots to nil. Nice crowd building here in the Gangnam Curling Center for the final game of the wheelchair curling event. China making a very positive start, leading Norway by two shots to nil. Hello now. Oh, Wang Lang having a good shuffle on something while she's about to <laughs> throw the stone, Just chomping that. away keeping herself energized and fueled. These games oh, are long. Uh, they take uh, a lot of energy, uh, a lot of focus. Oh, 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 oh. Well, they wanted to stop. Oh, it's kind of like uh, listening to oh, Sergio okay. Garcia or something oh, out on the golf course and he's shouting at the ball and telling it to go and stop and oh, spin no. and all sorts. You never know what's going to be the difference maker. And we have seen that that tactic from Team China really does energize them and keep them together, pushing towards the goal together. Much quieter bunch, this Norwegian side. Just go about their business quietly, get the job done, get lots of stones in play. Yeah, the team from Norway has just had the most incredible kind of comeback performance throughout the week. They were up against it from 
the start of the championship. They made lineup changes. Rune Lorenzen benched himself, essentially, knocked himself down a position, let himself settle in, find his rhythm. They've, they've really responded well when under pressure and their backs were against the wall. And they're under a bit of pressure here. It's early in the game. And Wang Meng's going to do everything she can to keep that pressure right on them. Yeah, China just wants them to keep the play in the house. Just bring their play throughout the event, and it certainly worked. China line two here. Now, oh, this will be interesting. Norway. Come on, man. Looks like they are going to play a takeout on two redstones. I wonder if they try something a bit more adventurous, a bit more creative. It only seems to play shots on the clockwise rotation. Cecil Locken. But she's very good at it. Most of the players using that side delivery or V delivery. No one else throws it like this. She gets her full body weight through it, though. You've got to consider that technique is self-taught. Yeah, it's well. I mean, it's it's clearly adaptive to her strengths, and that's and that's the thing about a curling delivery. Uh, you know, to your point oh. about golf, oh. every every player oh. has kind of a natural swing, a natural oh, yeah. ability, oh. and. Uh, You've got to figure out what works best for you that you can create the most consistent technique that's repeatable, that you know how to manage. Yeah. Well, because Cecil Loken ah. just hit Man, and rolled yeah. out of the out of play, oh. and China can just peel the guards. Oh. They're definitely oh. the most defensive team that we've seen oh. this week. Takes the guard and rumbles the one in the house as well. Just clears everything out of there. And suddenly it is a desolate field of play. Absolutely nothing in play now. Destructive. I don't think you'll be too worried about losing the one in the house though. Not when you're up by two points. Oh, and still not finding his draw weight. Yeah, it's been a slow start to the game for Severson. Seems really happy in the background. Just the full participation from all of these players on every shot. It is. It's just really fun to to see their enthusiasm, their excitement, their connection. <laughs> there it is. Take out this time for Severson. Time to get a little production, and he does. Nice wide open takeout. Hits square on the nose of that rock. Yeah, and that's his favorite game, so it's nice to get a couple of stones that you're, that you're comfortable with under your belt. He'll be back in the third end. This is Chen Jianxin 
Oh. Shuffling his way into position. Yeah, and his teammate, Leo Wei, right behind him, oh, stabilizing yeah. that chair. Shouting hurry at us. It's like they've got invisible sweepers. Yeah, so in wheelchair curling, there are no sweepers. In the traditional format of the game, you'd have at least two sweepers for the most part. And, uh, you know, I, I suspect that this Team China might train playing the traditional game. And uh, maybe they're used to having sweepers. Or maybe they can just see something that we can't. <laughs> maybe that's why they make so much shots. So so many shots, even. Well, Stordal just picks enough for that one to get it out. Yeah, accomplishes the primary goal. And at this point, I think uh, Norway's <coughs> looking maybe to blank. Uh, that wide open field of play from the great shot from Leo Wei that just removed every rock from play. Uh, China electing to oh. put this rock to oh. the side of the ice. Draw to the wing. Oh. Oh. Yeah, they just want this one anywhere in the house. I think they're going to be a little disappointed because that's going to be only through the back line and out of play. It's heavy. A nice one for Justine Sturdal to get a feel for draw weight through a couple of takeouts in the first end. And the conditions do seem to be fast this afternoon. It's cold and dry outside, and ice conditions very slick indeed. That one drifts through the house and leaves something for China to try and freeze on. Maybe they can still force Norway <laughs> to score in this end yet. <laughs> so you would have just heard the little bee in the arena buzzing around the microphones. It wasn't actually a bee, it was Wong Hai Tao's wheelchair he does like a handbrake turn. You can see the skid marks. Yeah, you can see the marks on the ice. Uh, he moves very quickly up and down the sheet of ice. He wastes no time. And then he uh, slams on the handbrake and spins right into place. Looks like a good attempt here. Yeah, that's not just a good attempt. <laughs> That's near perfect. Oh, it's such a difficult shot, that wide open freeze. No. Terrific attempt by the Chinese skip. Yeah, and that shot in, in, in wheelchair curling, since they do not have sweepers, that man right there has to do it all on his own, make it perfect. And now it's going to be up to Rune to do the same thing. Make it perfect. He was going to remove that rock from play. Well, they just need to be careful not to hit this stone on the right hand side as Rune looks at it. All of them have different ways of doing it. So the side delivery, body absolutely still. So it's on its way and looking for a nose hit. 
Starting to break now. Hits on the inside. And that is the mistake that China were trying to force. Another mistake from Rooney Lawrence in. Follows up that one in the second end with this one here. Could have hit that anywhere on the left-hand side of that stone and it would have, would have gone away. You know, remember he missed with his last stone in the first end. <coughs> and may have made an overcorrection there. So anywhere in the house here. Well, anywhere in the house here for Wong Hai Tao and Naya, uh, try, start again. Norway will be forced oh. to score one. Oh. This rock starting to curl. They'd love it to sit about six feet in front of the stone that's in the back of the rings. Short again. Does Norway have a? Ch they can see that rock in the back. Uh, it's a little bit of a disappointment there. Yes, Norway has all that rock. They're going to try and blank this end. So they just need to peel it out. Rene Lawrence in with the final stone of the second end. Needs to steady the ship a little bit. He needs to make a good shot. This is looking pretty good. And does it roll out? Oh, that's Ooh, close. I think that might be in. I think oh. that might still be in, but we'll soon find out. Yes, Justine Stuart out calling the official to measure this one so rather than the, the measure that we've seen used throughout the week measuring two stones then this one is called the biter the six foot measure and it just determines whether that stone is in the house or not Norway don't want it to be in the house they want to keep the last stone advantage and if they blank this end they'll do so if they score one, then they will relinquish that <laughs> last one advantage and give it back to China. Of course, when you have the last stone, then you want to score two points or more. So one would be a bit cheap. It and is in. Just had to roll another inch. The official just double checking. So it's a score of one for Norway in the second end. And when we come back in the third, it will be China with last stone and leading by one shot. Just the one sheet in action. The gold medal game on sheet B, over there on sheet D, the podium where the medals will be presented later. We know China will get the bronze, but who's going to take the gold and the silver? Canada will get the bronze. Who did I say? China. No, they won't get the bronze. Yeah, no. they for sure will not get the bronze. And... Uh, the interesting thing that's happening, uh, we saw some statistics, they're early. Uh, the interesting statistic that came up was that China is throwing more draws than takeouts in this game. That is absolutely not to form for uh, what has worked for China leading up till now. But uh, it's working for them today as they're one up on the scoreboard. They have the last rock advantage. 
Yeah, they could be further ahead as well. They missed that open draw for three in the Round first. Yeah, and, he, and uh, then the skip came up light again in the second. You wonder, is that rock maybe a little bit slower? Uh, it's unusual for Wang Haitao to miss those open shots, and he's missed two of them with the same rock. They'll have to keep an eye on that. Oh. Wang Meng. She wants to keep an eye on this draw coming around the wide side of the Norwegian guard. It's a really good line here. Just needs it to rear up now and actually curls right out the other side. Great effort though. Giving herself a high five. Yeah, she she gave an interview after winning the semifinal where she said that uh, now that Team China is on the podium for certain, she can relax a little bit and enjoy this game. Yeah, she does look like she's enjoying herself as well. Definitely the smiliest player on the ice. Unfortunately, you don't get any medals for smiling a lot, <laughs> but she's making a lot of shots to back it up as well, so. Yes, she is. Yep. Yeah. So a couple of guards from Norway. Yeah. Looks like we might get an explosive third end here with lots of stones in play. Yeah, these are fun ends. Guards out front, some rocks yeah. in the scoring oh. area. They think it's a bit too much speed at the moment. And they're asking it to slow down easily past the guard. It's pretty good to me. They <laughs> that is right. What a stone there from Wang Mang. Couldn't have placed it in a better spot. So much curl on the ice. That passed that guard by at least a stone, maybe a stone and a half, and it banks right down in there. Oh, the playing conditions for these athletes have been excellent this week. Now, this is a tough shot here for Severson. Probably not really what he wanted to see. It's a, some sort of a come around and tap back, and it's a difficult, difficult shot. And he's so tight on the guard, and then opens it up. Well, hopefully they'll be able to see it next time. See him with that big bit of blue tape, that blue bit of physio tape up the back of his neck. It was pink earlier in the week. They found some blue tape for him. Yeah, match the trousers. Oh, this athletic, this athletic setup, the forward lean and the power through oh. the shoulder, the chest, the back muscles. You know, his technique, the way he sets up, he gets right over the kill. It's almost like snooker. Yeah, it's a, it's a billiard shot. Yeah. He's oh, that's good. Right in front. Norway makes the double takeout. They don't get to roll on the rings. There's maybe a chance for a triple, right? If uh, you were to hit uh, just off nose on the inside of that top rock towards the center line. You could get all three of the Chinese stones moving. But he's given it a lot of weight. Just Lacking accuracy though and hits and runs and leaves China in the same position really to, to throw the guard once more. Norway seem very quiet out in the ice. It might just be because of the amount of noise that China make, but Yeah, it is a unique kind of team, China. Uh, that yelling, that 
that big, fast presence, um, how f quickly they maneuver around the ice. It, it's, it's unusual, I think, in wheelchair curling. It, it may be the new standard if, uh, you know, as China's here playing for the gold medal. A little bit further in this time. A little bit of deja vu. There was a similar situation in the the first end where China froze their own and left Norway with a chance to hit and stick and lie in front. Yeah, the angles are a little bit better for China this time, though. Um, actually, Norway's going to have a tough time finding its way to shot. It's going to be a tough double takeout. They will sit in the open if they make it. And again, Norway just struggling to keep their stones in play. It just makes life so much easier for China because they can just keep throwing up those draws, whereas if they manage to keep one in the house, the Norwegians, then you may well see China play a takeout. The best hitting team in the field, China, it has become the best drawing team in the field oh. in this gold medal game. Oh. Well, there's no question that the best shot makers in the field oh. always had the strategy to back it up, and that's Absolutely, where Norway excel, they, they have good strategy. It's just about where they can make enough shots to live with this Chinese team. Looking good here, again, directly in front of that shot stone. The triple's back. Norway needs it. Yeah, the, you get the feeling like they, they need a big shot to kind of get them kick started here in this game because it's just been one way traffic so far. China completely dominating the early exchanges. Yeah, e a double takeout here would give Norway a, a control position in front of the rings, though. So just nice, steady execution. Heard a little bit of a bounce from that stone as it left the head of the queue. And sitting on the wide side, he's going to get two. That helps. Well, we think that red still went out the side. Great shot there by Justin Stordal. That'll make a big difference in this end. Gets two for the price of one. Spins it all the way across the house, and out it goes. Great shot by the veteran third player. Yeah, I love that. I love their caps. The curling stone on there. Semblance of the Norwegian flag. Halfway underneath that guard. High in the rings. Beautifully managed draw there. They're making so many shots right now, China. Yesterday it was all simple, kind of open shots, but they're showing that they can make some more technical ones as well. They made some amazing draws. Oh, and here comes Norway without the last stone, calling the draw here. It's time for Norway to try a different tactic. It is dangerous, but if this skip could settle a rock down in between those stones, the Chinese counters, he might be able to uh, change the fortunes of Team Norway in this end. You can see the hit would be difficult. You could only hit half that rock. You'd roll into the open. This is very risky. The reward would be high.
Well, a huge shot already in this gold medal game. Norwegian skip Rooney Lawrence and trying to come around that stone. He's got a great line. He's got a great line. Oh, yes. What a shot from Rooney Lawrence. Pick that one out. Oh, do not count Norway out. Look at this. Oh, just diving past that stone in the top eight foot. And this is what this Norwegian team does. They don't make the most shots in the field, not by any stretch, but they make the right ones at the key times. They get lots of stones in play, and then they just get one in there, and it's impossible to get it out. Great shot there by Rooney. So we find that. I like that. And now for the first time this game, this man is under pressure. It's the gold medal final. He needs to answer the Norwegian skips. Beautiful draw. You're gonna play a split on the top. Just try and open it up. Keep a couple of rocks around in the rings. Not a lot of rotation on this one, and it over curls. Bit of a let off for Norway, who could potentially swing another one round everything here. And we gotta see if uh, there's a hole there to go through. Well, looks like they want to protect what they've got. Still thinking about it though. This is a wise man. Looking for the guard. He knows that the that skip from China throws such accurate, big takeout weight. If he could get through that port and chip the Norwegian stone out, it'd be for two and send China to a three-point lead. The way it stands now, if Norway could land a rock on that tram line, they could block all access. He doesn't look convinced. Yep. He's changing his own target. A little bit less ice. Well, this one just trying to plug the hole. It's got quite a lot of running on it at the moment. I don't want to rumble the guards too much. That's not really going to change the situation. China may well be able to still play down through that port and chip the yellow out. He knew it. He wanted less ice. I don't know if it was just the weight that beat that one. And came right down onto the nose of that guard and pushed it a foot. If he'd played a little bit less weight there, he might have got the curl that he needed. But we have no. seen that crossing that center line, it has been a little bit straighter than, say, coming from right from the outside of the sheet into the middle. Yeah, and there's a couple of places down uh, right along the center line that can run really straight with a bit of weight. So this this is the, the only team out here who does uh, both players holding oh their yeah. skips chair. A little extra stability. They let him line up right down the right tram line. That rock has to start inside those lines. Well, you know, he's a big unit on high top, and he can throw extremely hard, so I'm sure there's a lot of momentum in there. What's happening here? Oh, hello. How unlucky is that for China? He tight, he catches the guard, he rolls over, 
and he pushes another Norwegian stone into the forefoot and Severson can hardly believe their luck. How are Norway in the lead in this game? <laughs> I have KG. no idea. KG. A steal of two in the third end. And it's Norway three, China two. difference in the stats there between China and Norway. China have the Norwegians number in shot making but Norway seem to have the Chinese number in craft. Yeah I mean this is this is Rune Lawrenson's gift the, uh, but all credit for that draw he made it was under such pressure. A beautiful draw. Ciso Loken lining up, torquing that wrist over the top of her cue to put rotation on it. We've seen her over curl a couple of times now on this clockwise rotation, just not really getting it spinning. And I think that's probably one of the difficulties she has with her technique is just getting the, the stone rotating sufficiently. Right, that consistent rotation. She's got a beautiful command of the speed of ice. Uh, she puts rocks in great places oh. in the field of play. And uh, her trouble definitely comes from the amount of rotation or lack of rotation sometimes. Pulls up short oh. on her or over oh. curls. Oh. You can see the number of rotations on this rock. It's going to hold it straighter. It's going to take it further in distance. Holding a true line to the shape of the ice. And continuing with her beautiful draw weight. Wang Meng. Happy with where that rock landed. A little less enthusiasm there in those uh, high fives than in Endigo. Yeah, that was definitely a setback in the and you can even draw I've drawn that shot up from Wang Hai Tao with his final stone of the third. Big steal of two for Norway. That could be the boost that they need all set up with that fantastic draw by Rune Lawrence with his first stone in the third end. So Loken just peels off her own guard. I'll be too concerned now. It'd be a different story if China had scored in the last 10 and they were trailing by a couple of points. Yeah, the um, the game management, the end management that uh, Norway bring, they know the upside and the downside to where they are and how they call their shots. Hurry! Oh, 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 So this is that real straight spot that we have seen down the ice. Every now and again, if this rock gets going on the, on the far side of the center line. It can hold the line.
Feels like it's hanging a bit here. Oh, no, just about no, no. gets both. Oh, <laughs> oh it is out. <laughs> the world's slowest double take out. That is just stunning. That straight spot on the ice helping Norway. Oh, he loves it. Big punch of the air there from early Frederick Severson. Yeah, uh, there are pictures on your screen, but not on the line score. That is a double takeout. Both those stones just crawled out of the house and no more. Oh, no, we need to be careful not to use up all of their luck in the, <laughs> the first oh, half oh, here. Oh, yeah, but China's got to be feeling oh, really oh, deflated oh, right oh, now. Oh, They're oh, playing oh, excellent. Oh, the only shots they really missed are the skips last. Other than that, this team is executing at one of the highest rates of, of any team in any game in this championship. They need to get their skip on track. Well, I don't think Norway will want to play too many ends like this. I think China are, are too good at the open shots. I think they need to use that, that wily brain of Rooney Lawrence in with lots of stones in play and generate oh, yeah. positions like they did in the last end. Yeah, there's no oh, doubt oh, about oh, it. Oh, 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 and China finally seeing an opportunity on the other side of the ice. I'd love to see China. I hope China's going to our right here, but he did point out to the left. We'll see where this rock goes. If he were to choose to kind of freeze on the, uh, on the side where there's a Norwegian stone out in front of the rings, it just visually creates a bit of traffic and might make uh, force the level of difficulty. Oh, yeah. They're going to the open side. Oh, yeah. And this is where oh, yeah. the tactics oh, yeah. come into play. Oh, yeah. How you can get the most out of the reality of the situation that you're facing. It's a relatively oh, yeah. wide open house. Oh, yeah. does just squeak yeah. into the house and no more. Yeah. Nor we aren't going to take any chances when they don't have the last stone. Oh, stored out to play. And they have to be careful of, of the stone that's in the back of the rings. There's a chance that uh, they could jam the Chinese stone into the back. Well, just hits on the wrong side of the nose there. But doesn't jam, leaves a guard, which China will try and come around now. So where Wang Haitao is, has his broom, that is where the player is lining up right here. Uh, oh. Chen Jianxin lining up directly at that brush on the far end of the ice. It's oh. the target. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. And oh. the right speed oh, yeah. and these beautiful oh. ice conditions. Oh. This oh, rock can oh, land oh, all the way behind oh, that yeah. corner guard, that oh. Norwegian stone in front of the rings. Yeah. Runs yeah. just a little bit straight, oh. sits, sits open, but great weight again from the Chinese third. Hear the chanting for China coming from the stands. Start out with a more technical takeout this time. 
Needs to make sure he gets past his own guard. Looking a little bit tight at the moment. Oh, just squeezed by it, but rolls out the side door. China will try that draw once more. So the second time for Chen Jianxin. We've got just about the same target. Now remember, that rock sat fully open. And he had beautiful oh. weight. Oh. This might just be one of those spots if they leave the center line too early. It'll curl a ton. This one moving nicely. He has got nice speed as well. Enters the house and tucks in behind. Nice draw by Zhang Xin. A tough shot here for Rune Lawrence, and you can only see a big half of that red stone and needs to be careful not to jam it on that red stone at the back just beside Justine Sturdal there. May we have the eight, please, before the seven? Big thread. Don't want that getting caught under your stone. That's a good catch. Any kind of debris on the ice can severely impact a stone's trajectory. And this is, again, a situation. There's no sweepers to help keep the path clean in front of the rocks. Yeah, actually, in the Olympic format with sweepers, then you may well consider raising the yellow guard up as a as a, re a reasonable option, a reasonable alternative. But Rene Lawrenson doesn't have that privilege. Gets himself set up, and it's not the heaviest takeout we'll, s we'll see him throw today, but mm. it looks like this is curling early. Is it by the guard? Oh, it is. <laughs> He's come to play Rene Lawrence in now. Took a couple of ends just to bed in. But, wow, what a shot. What a shot. Rolls to the center as well, so it's very difficult for China to get their stone behind the guard now. And do you have any clothing with a curling stone on it like that? I do. I do. Uh, an embroidered logo, curling stone. Yeah, I believe my first one was probably about 1994. It's a nice team hat that Norway's wearing. You know I like it. The long high tow. Going for this Whoa. hit and roll over. Oh, he's just going to hit this one in the nose and roll away from the guard, actually. So He just throws so much power. So much strength, power. Come over. Well, this is the easiest shot that Rooney's had for a while. Yeah, but he cannot afford a letdown. These are the kind of shots, these open shots, that have to be executed. Well, this went curling it across now and makes the hit and stick. Can't do too much more than that. China will be left with a shot to blank. 
and then the players will get a well-deserved five-minute rest, maybe a, a drink, some snacks, maybe a cup of tea, whatever your fancy is. Grapes on sticks. That's what we saw a lot of during the Olympics. Anyway, the final stone of the fourth end. Wang Hai Tao going for the hit and roll out. Well, he's stuck it. He's stuck it in the house. And that will end a very entertaining first half. Unpredictable stuff here in the gold medal game. And at halftime, it's all tied. Nothing between them. Wang Hai Tao, the Chinese skip, makes his way off. Scoring one in the fourth end. And when we come back in five minutes for the fifth end, it'll be a tie game. And we congratulate our Rock Radio winners. Way to go. Thank you for texting in your questions. There's English and there's Korean Rock Radio. <laughs> This team is playing excellent. Lead second and third. Wang Haidao, their skip, needs to settle in and get some more production from his rocks. He is playing well below his tournament average. And some time with his coach. She's going to try and set things up, get them ready for that second half of the game. So Norway started out a little, a little shaky. Their skip made some extraordinary shots. Really, the only player that needs to get to get it going is their second, but he made a couple of big ones when they needed to. And the Norwegians are taking every advantage of this chance at a gold medal. Overall, China outplaying statistically, but the veteran Norwegian team outmaneuvering Team China in that field of play.
Peter Dalman, the Norwegian coach, just leading the high fives for the Norwegian team. And with just 30 seconds left in the break before fifth end gets underway and the clock starts for China. Everybody making their way out. It's half time and we're still no further forward as to who is going to take the gold and who is going to take the silver. This has been an outstanding game. You would expect nothing less from the gold medal final. Team China really on fire at lead, second and third, just oh. suffering a little bit with uh, production on the skips rocks. You can see uh, Wang Meng, oh. she's upping her percentages from her tournament ah. average. Looking a little bit inside at the moment. This one's going to cross over the center line where she would have wanted it. And keeps it nice and tight to the house. So that's a good start to the fifth end for China. And always that signature smile. Well, it's a dazzling smile. And, you know, she gives it to her teammates. She looks, glances up at her coaching bench. She looks like the kind of person that would never have a bad word to say about anyone. This is Cecil Loken throwing the clockwise rotation as she usually does. Yeah, now she has thrown about uh, 141 clockwise rotating shots and uh, 49 counterclockwise. So the difference is pretty significant throughout the tournament. Um, if I was Team China, creating my game plan would be built around that stat to start and end. Yeah, there's always uh, a favoritism there towards the clockwise three, about three to one roughly. She throws in comparison to the anti-clockwise handle. Here's Wang oh. Meng. I'm trying to make a freeze here, I think right down into the rings. Oh, it's the takeout. Oh, she's wide. There's the initial indication from the thrower. And based on the kind of weight that China throws, being wide is, is a pretty unforgiving set of circumstances. And there you have it. So we talk about that, the clockwise and the anti-clockwise or counter-clockwise shot. If China had sat their first guard on the other side of the center line, Cecil Loken would have been forced to the turn she does not prefer. So that's the kind of little subtle game plans, little subtle tactics that uh, you know, China will only get better with as they as they keep competing, as we, we mentioned earlier, they're the youngest the team back. out here in the field. The youngest player, though. That's the alternate for Team Norway. She's 19, getting lots of good experience watching and uh, working through the systems with Norway. Super to get a, that young an athlete this kind of experience. Yeah, learning from the great master as well, Rene Lawrenson. It's a perfect oh. apprenticeship. Yeah. Oh. Cecil Loken just drifting to the back of the house here and China will have another chance to make this take out at the top of the red circle. And Leo Wei, he's being asked to Gonna pick up the pieces from the missed shot. Oh, He's having a great game. A little bit of a bounce there off the end of his cue that really makes a huge difference. And that's, and that's what you get. You end up peeling your own center guard. Things are wide open now. Well, it looks like an obvious decision here to throw a guard, but 
actually it's not really what you want to do when you've got the last stone and Rooney knows that he could throw another one into the house calling on his old buddy Justine Sturdall to help him out so there really only is two options here. You either guard the two stones in the center line, which would be very risky, or you just draw one over to either side of the house, right out to the wings. I think that's her preference, yeah. Anne. Yeah, at this point, you know, uh, separating those rocks as much as you can, I think would probably be the ideal scenario. The challenge is, is that China loves to hit. They love to hit. They are very good at it. And... Team Norway kind of going through the different options there. And also this is about getting some production from your second, who is struggling a little bit. We talked about that at break, that he needs to find his groove. So what is the best shot, not only for the, the situation, but also for where you know the ice conditions and how the player is throwing? What are they going to make? So by drawing into the center of the house, Rune is giving his player a couple of options. If it comes up short, it's a guard. If it comes up heavy, it taps their own. This one over curling a little bit from Severson. Hola. Hola. Very, Hola. very long. Yeah. Part of the course, really, that the players didn't pick the shot that we would. <laughs> yeah, but that's all right. But, you know, and again, knowing kind of the tolerances for your athlete, that's a made shot for Severson, and he's been struggling. So to feel good about something, that will carry on to his next rock. And that is something that Team China, that's a rock out there that they have to navigate. They have to do it immediately. The danger with a center guard when you have hammer is that you may be the one navigating it at the end of the end. So by the guard and it's going to make the take out as well and he couldn't see much of that stone and at that weight that is an incredible shot from leo weight sits around on the wing too they just have such confidence in the shape of the ice how the rocks are going to move and that intensity Yeah, he wants back on the ice as soon as possible. He's away to the little boys' room for a couple of minutes. Anyway, this is Uli Frederick Severson, only 42% in this game. Do with him just making a few more shots. Plenty to take out on the wing here. He hit some runs. That was second shot position. I th thought they might have just played a draw over there somewhere. Yeah, and again, that's, that might be that factor that he's not playing so well. So to give him what he's most comfortable with, seconds quite, quite often are throwing takeouts. Uh, that can quite often be the strength of their game. Oh. Oh. Chen Jianxin having a terrific game, 81%. Oh. I think he loved that throw. Oh. Looking yeah. wide in the moment. There's a lot of space yet. A lot of space in this sheet yet to travel. Oh, and doesn't get it. Well, now Norway can draw around that guard that they played. Yep. Missed by quite a way. Just about smashed the foot plates off at the back. Yeah, they throw with a lot of power. Justine Stordahl playing very steady. 
This is looking very light. Mm, not even close. And Norway not able to punish China for that huge miss with Chen's first stone. It's going to get another bite of the cherry here, though. Now you, you just wonder, where's the correction? Is it in how they set the target, the weight they throw, the line oh. he throws? Oh. You never want a double correction. <laughs> less ice and less weight. Uh, less ice and uh, being tighter to the broom. Oh, well, certainly tighter. And that's exactly what you're talking about. And it's so easy to do. It is so easy to do. Your skip tightens up the ice. You missed on the wide side. You tighten up your line or you take some weight off and you get that double correction. And you end up with uh, the second miss of the end in the same spot. Norway with another chance to hook one around the center guard. Great chance for multiple score here for the Norwegians. Justine Sturdow with that more upright position than a lot of the, the other players. Very strong guy, competed in the 1988 Paralympic Games in Seoul and powerlifting, so strong upper body. Maybe a bit too strong with this one, though. Read off. Oh, dear. Oh, now that's, now that's another overcorrection. That's just, uh, remember, he came up short on the first one. Oh. Was going to make sure he was there on the next. And just a little bit extra weight. It is so easy to do in this sport. It's so challenging. That area that they're aiming at is so far away. And managing... Each sub subsequent rock down the same path, it gets a little bit faster and a little bit faster. And just didn't quite adjust. Now here's the man that needs to make a major adjustment. He is not playing to his norm. And he's got an opportunity here to make an impact on the situation. His team's missed two in a row. Very long cue. Oh. Yeah. No, 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 no. Over two oh. meters long, that cue. Oh. 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 He's done a good job here. Oh. Makes the hit and stick. Lovely shot oh. there by Wong Hai Tao. Oh. He shows the third player that's how you do it. Yeah, now it's a decision making time for Rune Lorentzen. Is he going to play the hit? He is. He's going to play the hit in the back. It is vital that Norway keep this rock in the rings. Vital. That center guard, we talked earlier that it could come back to, to punish the team with the hammer. If Norway should roll out here, China gets a free practice draw right in the center of the rings, potentially behind cover. Rene Lawrence and outplaying his opposite number, 69%, way above his tournament accuracy, rising to the occasion. Oh, this needs to curl a bit, I think. Just. Oh, the game of attrition here, you take it. No, you take it. He's going to be facing a tough situation with his next. I think both both teams, both skips especially, just want it a little bit too much and they're struggling to deal with the, the pressure. So anywhere in the house for Wang Hai Tao. He's really struggled in his draws today. Only 25% for four draws. And he's been a bit light with a few of them. This one's got some running on it. It's got a lot of running on it. Will the back one save him? It won't. He takes it out. And maybe 
His saving grace is here that he rolled almost behind the guard. Looks like it's still open though. Just cannot find that draw weight. Where has it gone? Oh, it is it is all in the heartbeat and the pressure of the situation. You know that each of these athletes has the physical skill. It's now about the mental ability to handle the emotion and pressure of the Paralympic gold medal game. This one needs to curl a bit. Oh, he's got it. Nicely done. Very nicely done by Rooney Lawrence. And gets away with it. Both teams letting each other off the hook really in the fifth end but Norway get the outcome that they were looking for they get the blank end in the fifth the scoreline still all tied here and Norway have the last stone in the sixth end That's just starting to fall a little. Yeah, they were well ahead in the early part of the game. And as their stats fell, the line score shifted a bit. Their very controlled first end <laughs> slipped away. Wong Man gets the sixth end started. Sends this red Chinese stone on its way. Down into the front of the house. I think we'll see a corner guard here from Norway. No, nope. take out called. I'm just going to stop predicting what's <laughs> going to happen next. That could still be a corner guard target. We'll know in a second. It's a takeout. Perfectly done. This is just playing right into the Chinese hands here in this sixth end. Norway not really showing any willingness to take a chance and try and put two on the board here in six. And normally you would be a little bit more adventurous in the sixth end when you've got the last stone in the tied game, man. Yeah, I think so. And, uh, you know, this, mi this might be the experience of uh, Team Norway, just knowing that it's, it's about managing the pressure and the, you know, and the setups from here on out. Uh, they're willing to be a little bit conservative. They were very busy. Well, Canada made this choice against China yesterday, and China made Canada pay. Uh, Norway were in their own semi-final battle against the host nation, Republic of Korea. So they might not have been watching that game. Um, we know with China, you need to put some pressure on them. You need to force them into very difficult situations. Well, this is yeah. Two good takeouts here from the Norwegian lead. And that's a, a really good takeout, moving to the side, moving away from the center of the ice, changing up the angle for China. We're getting right down to the business end of this gold medal game. 
still all tied. It's just a three-end shootout now. Not having any problems with accuracy in this end on the takeouts. Yeah, it's one after the other. Ori would love to just sit right on the nose, hit square. Oh. No. On the wide side again. I think it's a little oh. bit of a technical issue. The, yeah. the Norwegian team don't seem to kind of keep their cue nice and low to the ice like the Chinese do. And by flicking it up in there, I think they're inadvertently flicking the stone offline as well. If you watch Leo Wei, he keeps the cue very low through. He goes right through the stone to the target. Yeah, any kind of upward momentum at the end of the release can put a little bit of outward momentum on the trajectory of the stone. Go, 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 go! It holds true in all disciplines of curling. Oh. Needs it to stop now. Needs it to stop. And it just hangs on. Well, China are looking good for making Norway pay for that miss. Yeah, and the, and the lack of aggressive tactics uh, employed on those Leeds rocks. I, is that going to punish Norway? Well, that's a beauty. <laughs> after after missing that previous one, he fully focused on that one and rolls it right over in front of the other one. Great shot there by Severson. Well, that's what you got to do. If you if you have a mistake on your first one, follow a miss with a made shot. Your team will forgive you. I had a coach somewhere along the line that said, well, if you do anything, make all your second ones. Oh. And uh, yep. really sets sets your team up, ups the level of difficulty for the opponent. The perfect person to face that tonight is oh. Chen Jian Shin. Having a great game. Continues. That's a very good shot there from Chen. Don't have too much room to work with there. But those two redstones now lined up, stacked up for a double here. And Justine Sturdall going for the the big takeout here. It's close. Oh, has he just rolled out too far? He has no longer in shot position, I think. We still see China hit that stone. He, it's, it's good he stuck around the edge of the rings. Uh, it still forces China to uh, make a choice whether or not to, to go for it, hit it. They could choose to draw to the open side. Well, hits on the outside and goes out of the rings. And now will we see Norway try some offense with that stone in the back of the rings? They could draw down. We saw that 
play out to a positive for China, but Norway gonna stick with the more defensive approach of uh, taking the stone out of play. You know, and this might be a, a solid tactic. Uh, Stordahl hasn't hasn't executed on his draw as well, so uh, his skip is going to try and get the most production he can out of him, and that's the takeout game right now. Well, nothing really in play. There's that redstone right over there by the boards but it's not really in any sort of a useful position for anybody china could try and draw one alongside it that would probably be their best option of course they're going to the other side of the house so just choosing to go open. He's pleased he, uh, he, he found a little bit of draw weight there. That's going to help his numbers. Oh, they talked about maybe throwing the other turn and then went back to the original call. Yeah, I just wonder if they've been thinking about previous shots and some of the misses that they've had down this line, both from Severson and from Lorenzen. Yeah, it, it's not about the spot in the ice. It's, it's, it's how they're choosing to handle it. No problem on that one. Just another open takeout required here for Wang Hai Tao. Should be straightforward. And of course it is. Off it goes and Norway with a last stone just to, um, to blank here. To blank the, the fifth end as well. It looks like they're just trying to blank their way through to the eighth end to score one, potentially. Such a, a close game. Every time you think one team's going to take the lead and move away from the other or take advantage of a situation, then we have a miss or a great shot. This is the final stone of the sixth end. Rune Lawrence tried to hit and run. And he hits it on the nose. Score of one. And Norway have a one shot lead. Happy with that. Just two ends to come. And Norway in pole position after that last stone. So this really could still go either way after six ends. Norway with a one shot advantage. One last game 
to sort out in this wheelchair curling event. The gold medal game, Canada already bronze medal winners. Shame and Norway fighting it out here for the gold. Just two ends to play here of the regulation eight. This is Cecil Loken getting us underway. Norway forced to score one in the sixth end and therefore they start the seventh. That's Justine Sturdal holding the brush there, skipping for the time being as Rooney Lawrenson's clearly just uh, nipped off for a quick refreshment break. And Cecil Locken drops one right on the button. Great shot there by the Norwegian lead. Oh. Oh, no prizes for guessing what uh, shot that China are going to call here. It's their favorite. They get the take out going. It's a really well delivered stone there by Wang Mang. Oh, actually it's over curled. I thought the stone was on the other side of the center line and a complete miss. Wow. The center line's been a little tricky. It's been a little tricky. Well, now Norway can <laughs> throw a guard on that stone and maybe steal. They could be thinking steal here already here. Well, with a well-placed guard after the perfectly placed draw, steal is absolutely possible. It's got plenty of pace. It's not going to be a long guard. Looks like it's going to go right down onto that stone on the button. Maybe even past it, actually. That's that quick spot on the ice. We've, saw, we've seen that a couple of times this game. Still, Norway quite happy to play with the stones in the house. They've got the lead. They're okay with that. <sighs> They would love to force China just to score one though here in seven. Take that last stone down the eighth end. One line oh. needing to make some corrections after that previous miss. She's got the other turn going this time. Oh, and she bounces that stone. She's got a bit of a better line though. quite but a great shot she sits count in the center of the rings right in front of the Norwegian stone Norway's gonna have to navigate their own stone in the back of the forefoot to get rid of that Chinese counter Well, in the distance there, I think I could see Rene Lawrenson just returning to the, the field of play. Making his way back. Severson trying to make the takeout here. It's over curling. And he loses his back yellow. Keeps China intact, in short position. Mm. So that was the danger, just, a, it was a tough spot to navigate. Wang Meng set that up beautifully. And Severson over curls a bit. Not been at his best today, Severson. Luckily, his skip was playing very well. 
Leo Wei trying to split the rings here, drawing out to the right hand side of the house. Pretty good. And it starts to move a ton over to the edge. And <laughs> just oh, hangs yes. around back there. Great weight management. Fantastic shot. China line two and Lawrenson and Stordahl just having I think a little bit of a handover discussion. Yeah, how was the ice moving? What, it, what did he see? So looking for a hit and roll towards the other one. That's cool. <laughs> oh, oh boy. Right through the wickets. Yeah, I'll be disappointed with that seventh oh, round that he's played. Yeah. The, oh. the pressure just getting, getting to the Severs in a little bit. Yeah, this is his first Paralympics. And then to be in the gold medal final, uh, it's a... Uh, it's an incredible accomplishment, but it's an incredible amount of pressure as well. I mean, it could be it could be something else entirely. We're uh, taking a bit of a guess there. Remember, Norway did win the gold medal at the World Championship here in Gangnam last year. And they did it in a somewhat similar fashion, coming through a tiebreaker. Very tough set of circumstances. Well, China with a miss of their own comes up short. Would have liked to get that one in the house to lie three, and Leo Wade disappointed with that one. It's not a terrible setup, though. That's a corner guard, and you know, with some patience, they might be able to work their way over towards that. They could hide a rock behind there later in the end. It's time for Houston Stordahl to make some impact for Norway. Not a lot of rotation on this one from Stordahl. Look, he just lost it when the stone lifted there in the release. Good enough to make it go, though. A ton of pace on it. Kind of held the line. Hello. Mm, now. China with a great chance to come around this corner guard. Maybe they can even score three here in the seventh end if they play, string a few good shots together. A wise coach once told me, oh. before you can score three, yeah. you must secure your score of two. <laughs> and... Oh. Uh, Leading towards the corner guard might also give Norway a way out of this. So uh, this is a bit of a risky play. And this Certainly not short at the moment. Yeah, this looks pretty spicy. Oh, right through the house. And now Norway can try and make a freeze. The pressure cuts both ways. Two fam. Two fam. I think they're just playing a straight draw, maybe rather than the the freeze. Yeah, straight draw to uh, above the T line, tucked underneath that corner guard. Oh, that would put so much pressure on the opposition. A better rotation on this one from start out. Has it got the running to get past that guard? Just coming into picture now. It's a good line. Has it got the weight? It just touches the top one. I'm not sure it would have made it anyway. Damn. 
And China will have another chance. I wonder if they might choose to split the rings this time with that yellow guard being so tight to the house. Nope. Choosing to come around again. Oh. The bonus to this is that this man is the one who just threw down the path. Oh. He's playing very well despite yeah. that last rock oh. going through the house. Oh. So this is about a minor oh. adjustment. He needs to take six or seven oh. feet of weight oh. off the shot. Oh. The pace looks great if he's got the line. This is a fantastic yeah. shot. Yeah. They would have loved it a little bit deeper, yeah. but he made a nice adjustment from the heavy rock he threw the first time. And yeah. Chen Jian Shin helps China sit count one and two. Yeah, and remember that is a shot. Lying second shot in there. It doesn't have to be fully in the house. It just has to be touching that outer blue circle to be in a scoring position. Now, Brune, what do you fancy here? Well, if he's throwing the draw, that is a bold decision. It looks like his third is positioned for the draw. He'll go for the double takeout and two reds. That would probably be the safer decision, and that way that you're you're pretty much thinking, well, at least China aren't going to score more than two, and we're still in good shape to win the game. You know, this is a flashback to the third end where Rene made an incredible draw, but the situation, the setup was very different. Um, this is going to be a tough rock to tuck around. This is such an aggressive shot here from Norway. It needs to be made. If not, they're putting three or maybe even four or as a possibility. Heavy. Just pushes it up. And that's what I was worried about. He's left the guard as well, and China can hide a third one now. Yeah, the risk reward here was uh I think it was it wasn't even it wasn't even math. Uh it was way more risk than potential reward. <laughs> well that draw coming down now, right down the right hand side. Wong Hai Tao. The draw shot has not been his friend so far today. Just 33% for six draws. We'd love to make this one though. If he could force one more mistake from Rene Lawrenson in this end, then the game could almost be out of sight and the gold medal would almost be there for China. It's looking a little bit light though. Not oh. even close here from Wang oh. Haitao. Now, Rune is going to have that same draw once more. A couple of guards to draw behind now. They're forced to play it this time. They don't have the option to play that takeout. Yeah, this is now the only shot left for oh, Norway. I guess they could play the tap. Yeah. Seems to up the level of difficulty for the for the thrower. This may be an opportunity for Norway to call a timeout. Well, the other option could be to play a, a raised takeout on that yellow stone that just to the left of Justin Stardal there. Yeah, the middle stone. Well, undecided at the moment. 
Nice top spot here. You would have thought that if, if Rune threw a draw with his first one, that he would do the same again with his second. Yeah, that seems the natural choice. But uh, it looks like they're going to try and make that run through the hole. The angle takeout through the hole. Force the Chinese skip to a draw against uh, that single point. You wonder why he didn't hit on his first, and now he's playing a run on his second. Yeah, this is Rune Lawrenson's final stone of the seventh end. Maybe the pressure just getting to the Norwegians a little bit. And this one's curling hard. And will over curl onto the red. Squeezes one in. Is that going in for second shot? It might have, but I'm not, not happy with that throw. He is not happy with that throw. China sitting count <laughs> one and two. They need the full 12 foot for a third point. Oh. Oh, just not even close in the end there. And I think that uh, the call in his first shot may well be the one that he ruse there. Played the draw, came up short, and now China drawing for a huge score of three here in the seventh end. Final stone, oh. Wang Hai Tao. He's not made many draws in this game, but there was a time to do it. It's right here and now. He was short with his first one, and this one's got some running on it. Needs it to stop. Oh my, right on through the house. Only a score of two for China. What a chance to move two shots ahead with just one end to go. And Wong Hai Tao just cannot work out the speed of the ice at the moment. It's been a real struggle for him throughout this game. And it's going to be a one-shot game coming home. Norway trailing, so they do have that last stone advantage in the final end. It's the final end of the final game, the gold medal game here in the <coughs> Gangnam Curling Center. The fourth edition of the wheelchair <laughs> curling event since its inclusion in 2006. We've never had a gold medalist other than Canada. They've won the first three events in 06, 10 and 14. They won the bronze this time. This time it's going to be China or Norway getting the gold. And there is literally nothing between these two teams. One shot on the scoreboard. And now we have that last stone advantage. We may well see an extra end yet. And Norway have been particularly strong in the extra ends. They've won their last two or three games coming through one. So. Wang Meng just throws into the front of the house. Norway, so tough. They have been on the edge of elimination it's really since the beginning of the tournament. Those opening three losses, if anyone can answer in this moment where they're down, their backs against the wall, this is their last chance. It is this team from Norway. Trying to come around that stone at the top of the house. Not interested in using the free guard zone. And perfectly done by Cecil Locken. She knows exactly where the button is. That is a huge shot, given the circumstances, the pressure, what is on the line. And 
Argentina calling just a little bit of a tap back here. Oh. Oh. So she makes the, the ready call. Talking oh. to her stone. Trying to make it do what she wants it to. They can either play on the yellow or chip the top red. Wouldn't be a bad result either. Just to open it up. And looks like that is what's going to happen. Good shot there by Wang Meng. Rocks piling up in the rings. And even under all this pressure, there's still time for a big smile from ear to ear. Yeah, and a high five for her teammates. Norway calling the, the takeout on this wide redstone. Cecil, she's lining everything up. She gets herself set and she, and she torques that wrist right over the top of the delivery stick. All in line, lots of force, turns that wrist, puts the rotation on the rock. Well, pretty good here. Might get a roll inside. Not nicely done to lie too, though. Fantastic takeout. They know they've got a great chance here, Norway. The lead trying to psych up her teammates to make a big finish here. Two points required for Norway to take the gold. Double. Oh, hits it thin and runs through so close there to making contact with that shot stone. Just hits about a third of that first one. Half stone would have been close. Now, Rooney, where do you want to put your next one? Leo Wade just shearing that one on. Trying to Full calm time. down, obviously Full feeling time. a bit of pressure, a bit of nerves. Norway likely to split the house. Anywhere kind of in the white circle here is a good shot. Severson though, still continuing to struggle. That one right on through. Oh, such disappointment. Oh, he wants to come through for his team. Yeah, he just wants it too much at the moment. He's still got a shot to play though, so needs to get his head together. And give his ch team the best chance of, of winning this game and this event none more important than the Paralympic Games once every four years you don't want to have to wait until Beijing to have another pop oh. well you'll expect to see this shot stone disappear Leo Wei is so good at the big weight takeouts so accurate this one's curling. Over curling. Oh, not even close. Not even close. And that first stone of the end by Norwegian lead Cecil Loken in prime position right at the top of the button. And if you see, oh, just curls a couple of inches too much. And now, Ole Frederick Severson, if he was ever going to make a shot right now, right now would. 
be the time. Oh, he's got a lovely <laughs> flick off his own yellow to flatten it out. What a shot there by Severson. That might uh, that might uh, help his memory a bit, might erase some of the challenging shots he faced. That kiss, the ricochet, the spin to the side of the rings. You bet. You get to celebrate that one. There he is. I'm still here doing my bit, guys. Don't oh. you worry about that. Oh. Yeah, thanks for thanks for being there with me. Halfway through oh. this final oh. end, Chen oh. sends his down the ice. Oh. 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 And a hit and roll over towards that wide yellow stone. He's got a great oh. angle. Oh. Oh, that's a beauty. Puts it right next door. Oh, we've got a tough oh. task on their hands to score two here. They need to pretty much yeah. play a perfect end. No guards in play. That was their decision. Didn't use the free guard zone. Well, they knew their lead could <laughs> put a great rock in play and put some pressure once Wang Meng, the Chinese lead's rock, wasn't in the perfect spot. Now we're looking for the perfect hit and roll. It's curling a ton. Oh, he's missed it. And again. He has missed it on the inside. And Norway just can't seem to string a combination of stones made together. Over curls and China favorites really now in this game. Still a great chance for Norway to score one, but that would take him to the next round, and then China would have the last stone. Oh. Oh. Lots of deep breaths. I bet his oh, heart rate no. is going 200 right now. No. <laughs> They're happy with it. Bangs it on the nose, sticks it around to lie two. Now you wonder, can Norway nuzzle a rock right in there? And that looks like a, a pretty comfortable spot to sit a rock if I was Team Norway. Team China thrilled with the fact they're sitting one and two. So what to do? Well, looks like Norway calling the takeout here. We've switched turns, going the other direction. I think he's trying to hit the wide one first and then flop on top of the shot stone. How's this one? Oh, very nearly makes it. It's a good effort there from Stordal. Only two stones in play and they're side by side. Just skip stones to come here in this eighth end. Well, what Wong Hai Tao's takeout game has stayed really strong throughout. It's his draws that have been failing, but I can't see Wong Hai Tao having to play a draw here. Definitely going to remove that yellow with this first one anyway. Yeah, they are looking at the, the red stone in the back of the rings. They don't want to jam the Norwegian stone down onto it. Playing this inside out turn that they just saw. Stordal throw. Wanting it to curl. Oh, perfect shot. Oh, that's a beauty. China are looking good for the gold medal. Norway is going to have to do something really special here. Yeah, the rock positioning all of a sudden, absolutely all China right now. Yeah, they've played a textbook eighth end here. And Norway really with nothing to work with, no opportunities. 
There's no guards, there's nowhere to freeze, nowhere to hide. Is Wong Meng praying for gold? <laughs> you know what? She's done all she can. She has made so many shots. She has motivated and cheered her team on. And Norway's going to take its time out. Their coach, Peter Dahlman, will make his way to the ice, help them work through the options in this very challenging and incredibly important moment. Well, it would be huge for Norway to win this, wouldn't it? It would pretty much secure Ronnie Lawrence and Justine Stordahl's position as the greatest wheelchair curlers ever. We're certainly up there with the likes of Jim Armstrong of Canada and Sonia Gaudé and Ina Forrest of Canada. Well, and Peter has been out to have his say and have his word with the team. What would you say in this position? Well, uh, you've got to secure your opportunity to, at minimum, tie this game up. And uh, the scoring area right now is one feet, about two inches. You've got to make some space. A hit and flop to the outside might do that. Uh, you might want to roll farther away than sit right on top. If, if China were to ever get really aggressive and really bold and throw a guard on that, you'd have stymied yourself. So you might want to roll a little bit farther away and uh, guarantee your, your chance at the extra end. With those misses that they've had this end, just tying it up is, is a bit of a win. Uh, I know it's it's tough to steal, but uh, two is looking very unlikely at this point. So securing uh, that extra end would be all important. Rene Lawrenson sends his second last stone of the eighth on its way. And it is running. Maybe get the double. No. Well, he's made a good effort this hit and roll and at least opens up that forefoot, like you said, Anne. Yeah, I know that's not exactly what he wanted. He wanted to sit right in front of the Chinese stone, counting on the fact that they would try and blast at it. Maybe it would stick around. But this also shows him how to make his next shot that he might need. He's, he's like, that's okay. Now China's got a chance to hit and roll and put that stone right back where it was. First goal, primary objective. <coughs> Wang Haitao needs to remove that potential winning point for Norway. Well, you can cut the tension with a knife here. Everybody in behind trying to see where this one's going, holding Wang Hai Tao still. He delivers his final stone of the regulation A times. Just needs to get that Norwegian stone out of there, really. Running a little wide at the moment. Oh, he does enough to chip it out and sticks around for a shot. Does lose one of his own, though. And Rooney Lawrenson needs to make this final stone to force an extra end 
They've never really been in this game. Wong Hai Tao with a little bit more wayward than we've seen with that final one, but the reaction says it all. Picture says a thousand words. Yeah, he's, he's happy that, uh, that he got to that shot. And now this is a difficult, this is a tricky spot in the ice. Well, final stone of the eighth end, a must make here for Rooney Lawrenson to extend this game. And if he makes it, we'll go to an extra end. He has unbelievable stone cold under pressure. Rooney Lawrenson makes the hit and stick and ties things up after eight ends. There's Rike Everson, the alternate on the Norwegian bench. China played a really good eighth end there, and Norway just forced to take one. We're going to need the next end to sort this one out, though. It's five each. China have been the team who have made the most shots, they've made the most draws as well, but they haven't managed to put enough points on the board. They do still have the advantage, they're still favourites here for the gold. Thank you. We're going into a ninth end to try and separate these two teams. Unbelievable drama. It is very appropriate for the gold medal final to need extra time and each team's goal is going to be really really clear Norway needs to take advantage of the free guard zone put two rocks on the center line right in front of the scoring area This rock settles in beautifully, four feet off the rings. Well, you know, Norway have been in extra ends in both their last oh. round robin game and the semi final and come through them both. They stole to defeat Slovakia to secure their place in the semi-final. They'll need to do it again here to win the gold medal. So the adrenaline really has to be pumping through these players' veins. And Wang Meng maybe suffering with a bit of a rush of blood here right through the house. That will be put to the back. And Cecil Loken. <laughs> oh, her indomitable spirit is something to remember from these games. The pure joy with which uh, Wang Meng plays the game is, is enviable for anyone in sport. Yeah, she's having a party out there. And Cecil Loken. She is going to try and put a guard again. This is going to be high up, just over the hog line. This needs to go. It looks a little light. It's got to travel. She's got six, seven feet to go and just doesn't get it. Well, you've got to feel terrible for Cecil. She's had such a great game. She's made some fantastic draws, and it's such a shame that that will be her last shot of the Paralympics. She won't worry too much about it, though, if she comes away with a gold medal around her neck. Yeah, and she's guaranteed a silver medal, which I think if you were oh. to tell an athlete at the start of this championship, you'll go through the week and you'll be on the podium, uh, they would be thrilled. Go, go, at this go, point, go, go. once you're here in this game, though, you want oh. the gold and you yeah. can feel it. 
Well, they're yelling at it. The Shakers are trying, but that one over curls into the guard, over corrects that first stone, and a couple of stones. Well positioned for Norway to try and steal here. Yeah, and uh, Severson is going to be given the biggest draw of his life. You want your second, your second's first stone to be fully in the forefoot, as close to the center of the rings as possible. He's only 19% for four draws in this game. And this one doesn't look like it's going to get the job done either. Does err on the correct side though and leaves more granite out front. Yeah, and I think uh, I think it'll be tough to remove all three of those stones oh, if anyone uh, can oh. handle that job. Oh, we're going to see. I was going to say, <laughs> is he going to draw? That would be um, an extraordinarily challenging choice to make at this point. Leo Wei is going to try and remove oh. a couple of these stones. Oh, oh. Uh, here he comes. It really is like he's out there playing snooker. He's right over that delivery stick. Yeah, he's playing snooker with a 42-pound oh. rock yeah. that he, he, he just manages with oh. just oh. An incredible power. Oh. He's going to get a... Oh, oh, he just misses. Over curls a bit. Well, Severson with another chance at this come around draw there's two guards in front of the rings the key to this for Norway will be to get one in there in a scoring position before China remove those guards it's got to happen right now this one looking light as well yeah just not enough pace Still, though, at least it's in a a guarding position. Protects those two stones oh, closest. Oh, is that ever a nuisance? Maybe that was the call. Maybe maybe that's a a hundred percent made shot. We, we my Norwegian isn't great. <laughs> it might have been what oh! Norway wanted, and now China is falling into a bit of a trap oh. here. Is this a well laid plan? by Rune Lawrenson, the the tactical master. Oh. Kind of tricking China into drawing around center guards. Oh, no. well, they shouldn't be tricked into it if they are. <laughs> so here's Leo Wei caught up on the guard here. Not a lot of rotation, comes down hard at the end and more yeah, coverage for China, for Norway, sorry, to try and hide one in behind. Well, they are making things very forward. difficult for themselves. This is a bit of a, a dream setup for Norway to steal. Yeah, the, the nightmare part of this is that Norway's draw weight has been suspect for the middle of their lineup. Justin Stordahl has not made one yet. He's got a chance right here to negate those numbers completely. One well-placed shot. This has got a lot of line. It's it's quite outside. It starts to bend. It's trying hard. And it's going to find the house. How close can he get? How close is it? Into the white eight-foot circle. And Norway lying shot position here this kind of situation this is an absolutely any team can win this game now the last stone advantage is is difficult the way china are calling this end i'm not even sure the last stone advantage is an advantage <laughs> this is just an old-fashioned shootout yeah this is a race to the center of the rings who's going to get there first and chen jan shin 
He's had a fantastic game. Super strong. This is over curling. He's going to tick on, on the shot in the rings. He was way light. And how does Norway try that same turn and choke off any access into the rings? Or do they come and try and tap their own? Couple of options here for Norway. They're going to go to the tap. Well, both teams used their, in fact, China didn't use their timeout during the regular time of the game, but both teams do have an additional timeout. They have one timeout that they can use in the extra end. Still available. And a little bit extra weight. These rocks run really straight. It's starting to hook. Is he going to be able to make an impact on his stone? I think he's been a little bit tentative with this one. But he does guard it, at least. That's a shame. Could have been a bit more aggressive with that shot. Yeah, just a little bit bolder. His, his coaching staff might agree. Now China it's being an forced wider and wider out onto oh. the right-hand side of the oh. sheet. It's an absolute, what we call a Christmas tree setup, a staggered pine tree setup. Set right, it looks like the, the branches of the pine tree. Yeah, on both sides as well. Yeah. Whoever gets closest tucked around there, it's going to be very difficult to move. This looks like good speed here from Chen Ganshin, and he's got the line as well. He's going to be short position here. That could be a gold medal draw from Chen Jianxin. Yue Ching Shuang on the bench there, celebrating that one. And now Norway in big trouble. I think Norway being punished a little bit here for not choosing to come around that side themselves. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. They could own both paths into the forefoot the way those staggered guards were up front. Well, uh, Rene, you've pulled out some absolute beauties throughout this event and a couple of great shots in this final as well. If you ever needed one more in your career, this is it. And this needs to be a bold throw. He needs to throw about back line weight. He needs to just chip his stone over in towards the button. So just skip stones left in this extra end. Rooney Lawrenson, one of the all-time greats, needs one of the all-time greatest shots here. So running straight, hanging out there, waiting for it to curl. Needs to come down now, needs to come down. Just misses the edge of that. That is so close to being made. Great attempt, nice weight as well by Lawrenson. Timeout for them. Yeah. So Rooney already lining up the timeout for his last stone. Oh no, sorry, China have called the timeout. So they know that they're in great position here. Looks like they could just throw a guard on that left hand side of the sheet and Norway would have a really tough job getting into shot position. Yeah, at this point, uh, a rock anywhere out on, really on that tram line almost, or just outside. That's Yue Ching Shuang, the coach. The, well, a few of the players in the Chinese team in their biographies named her as their sporting hero. She won the world championship here in the Gangnam Curling Center in 2009. It's in the world women's, of course. And I'm not sure you're allowed to put your brush out there. You fella. are not allowed <laughs> to put it outside the <laughs> field of play. I think that would be an official arriving on the scene. Or yeah, you got to move up the sheet. No, and you can't be out 
Yeah, you can. Okay. <laughs> He's getting a little uh, help with the rule book. Justine <laughs> Sturdell. I'm sure there would have been a, an official arriving on the scene soon. Now, Chen arriving just about <laughs> the halfway line here, the way he's hitching up the ice. Yeah, Th it's incredible. You know, there is another option. I kind of want to tell China they could cross the center line. Yeah, you can play the other handle, guys. <laughs> you can play That's the other allowed. turn. It is allowed. Um, we see this quite, quite regularly. They're much more comfortable playing outside in. They play this turn with regularity. Not a lot of rotation, and that one should start to bank down now. Is it wide enough to cover the tap? It isn't, I don't think. Well, they seem pretty happy with Maybe it. Maybe just. Well, I think we'll see uh, Norway call their time out here, likely to weigh up their options. Just one stone each to come in this extra end. Oh, that's pretty good there. A little bit less weight than the previous one. I think the shot's still there, though. Just need to bend it like Beckham. Yeah. This is a very tough visual. You just ha you have to believe. If you're Rune Lorenzen, you have to believe the shot is there. This is without sweepers as well. An even more difficult task for the great Norwegian skip. Just trying to tap that yellow stone into the forefoot, into shot position. If he doesn't make it, China will be the gold medalists. It's on its way. Plenty of rotation. Needs to curl. Needs to curl now. He's past the guard. Oh, oh, what an effort. What an effort. It's not good enough, though. It doesn't push it far enough. China are the gold medalists here in the wheelchair curling event at the Gangnam Curling Center. And they are on top of the world. Unbelievable scenes. What a game of curling that was between two great teams. Wang Hai Tao, probably the most valuable player for any team throughout the week. He is a force in the sport of wheelchair curling, a force. And the tears will start to flow of happiness for China. Wang Meng is beside herself. Xing Shuang Yue. The coach, well done to her. Coaching this gold medal winning team from China. It'll be exciting for them to be back in 2022, defending on home turf as well in Beijing. Final score, final score here in this gold medal game. In an extra end, People's Republic of China six, Norway five. So China take the gold medal, Norway the silver, and Canada take the bronze. Watch yourself, guys. The flags are coming down. Maybe the cuddly toys will start coming as well. Yeah. I think Norway played an excellent game. They need to be so proud of themselves. A silver medal is an incredible accomplishment. That silver medal here at the Paralympics really completes the collection for Rene Lawrence and Justine Sturdall. Won all three colors of medal at the World Championship, three times world champions as well. And that fourth time of asking, Rene Lawrence gets his Paralympic silver medal. The missing one, the elusive one. And the highest performing team of the week here, really up and down the lineup, game in and game out, was Team China. And this is a hard earned, well earned gold medal for them. 
think a lot of teams will be playing a lot of money to get uh, Ching Shuan Yue along to events in South Korea in the future. She seems to be a, a bit of a good luck omen. A happy hunting ground for her, having won the, the world sure in 2009. And coaching this Chinese team to the gold medal here. They weren't the favourites at the start of the week by any stretch of the imagination, but the youngest team and what a future they've got. They could dominate world curling for years to come. Here's the start, Swung Hightow, the skip, playing a little bit below his best, but his pals were out there doing the job in front of him. Middle order struggled a little bit for Norway today, but Rune Lawrenson once again pulling out some of the key shots at the right times just when Norway needed them the most. Unfortunately, he couldn't make that last one in the extra end. It was a great attempt though. Here's the game stats. Norway with the only stolen points of the game, but otherwise China making far more shots than Norway, just not being as clinical as they needed to be to win it in regulation time. And this is how they all stack up after all of these 124 games are played. All 12 of these countries played some fantastic curling. Well, the Chinese fans clearly jubilant. They are over the moon. This is China's first ever medal at the Paralympic Games, the Paralympic Winter Games, and it's gold. The best you can do. Norway still very happy with their team's performance. They pushed China all the way, and they will still take home that silver medal. the first Norwegian medal in curling at the Paralympic Winter Games. Yes. Likely to be one of the families, uh, family members, I think, being interviewed. The victory ceremonies will come along shortly as well, all happening right here live in the Gangnam Curling Center. Canada bronze medalists, they overcame the hosts, Korea, in another really tight game earlier on this final day. Came right down to the last couple of stones as well there. Mark Idison and his troops taking that bronze medal away from the host nation. But you know, Korea, they were great to watch. They put in some super performances as well. Seo Sun Suk and his team. What an experience has been for them. Seo himself, one of the two people who lit the Paralympic cauldron as well in the opening ceremony. Yeah, and uh, he did so with Eun Young Kim, the skip of the women's silver medal winning Olympic team. What a time for curling. A time for these athletes in this fantastic host nation, Republic of Korea. They've done an extraordinary job welcoming the world into their home for the largest sporting events 
uh, over uh, a couple of weeks here. Just an incredibly welcoming country. They've done a fantastic job. Yeah, this Paralympics has been billed as the biggest Winter Paralympics ever. 567 athletes competing from 48 countries, plus the Mutual, Par Par uh, Mutual Paralympic Athletes delegation. Three new countries taking part, Georgia, North Korea, and Tajikistan. 80 medal events across six sports. It's been incredible. An incredible couple of months here in Pyeongchang. And the biggest moment yet in this building at the Paralympics is about to happen. The medal ceremonies are upcoming. All the, the media gathering there in front of the podium on sheet D over there in the, the far side. The ice is still underneath there somewhere. And nice to see quite a few fans sticking around. Yeah, you don't want to miss the the awarding of the medals. Pure joy for the athletes and their families, friends, the fans from around the world.
gentlemen, the victory ceremony for wheelchair curling. 지금부터 필드 컬링 종목에 시상식을 시작하겠습니다. So the victory ceremony is coming up here for the wheelchair curling event. The two great finals today, the bronze medal game and the gold medal game. The very worthy teams picking up those medals. Please welcome the medalists. Can feel the play for the last time in the most wonderful way. Nice to have the um, ice technician Stefan Rothsberger in shot there. Quick opportunity to say what a great job they've made of the ice conditions this week that's promoted such brilliant games of curling, super high performance levels from all teams, even the ones at the bottom of the round robin standings, you felt like they could have been in the mix in the semi-finals. It really was such an even and close competition. Um, this is just a wonderful moment to get up on that podium, to work so hard. These athletes will be presented not only with their medals, but also uh, a memory of the games. They'll be given the, uh, the Bond Epson mascots, the Asiatic Black Bear that stands for strong Mr. will Chung and courage. Chung, speaker of 20th National Assembly. So these are the technicians who are going to be presenting Mr. Kim the Governing Board medals the and mascots. Mr. Song Yeo Kim, IPC Governing Board. Ms. Rita Van Driel, Governing Board Member of the International Paralympic Rita Van Driel from the IPC Governing Board as well. Accompanied by Ms. Kate Kaithness, OBE, President of the World Curling Federation. Kate Keith Ness, the president of the World Curling Federation. Mr. Colin Graham. Like the, the mother of curling, isn't she? She is. She's the guy behind the scenes who coordinates everything on a day-to-day -day basis. Mr. Colin Grimslot. Ms. Eun Hae Yu. Bronze medalists representing Canada and Canada. Canada. Team Canada, winners of the bronze medal. They had a great game against the host nation, People's Republic of Korea, the Republic of Korea. This is the first time Canada is not winning the gold but it is an extraordinary moment to come through those medal rounds and win this bronze medal. Jamie Their alternate, Jamie Anseyu. Marie Wright. Thank you, Marie Wright. Second, Dennis Beeson. Ina Forrest. Third, Vice Gift for Team Canada. Two-time Paralympic champion and now bronze medalist, Ina Forrest. Mark Idison. And Mark Idison, Skip for Team Canada. They received their medals from Ms. Rita Van Driel. The IBC governing board member. And Banda B will be given out by Ms. Onyehe Yu. 
She's a member of the Education, Culture, and Sports and Tourism Committee in the National Assembly. have your bronze medal winning team Canada silver medalist big well done to North. the Canadians defeated Korea in the bronze medal game now we're going to move on to the silver medalists from Norway first time Norway has got a medal at the Olympic Winter Games and wheelchair curling, very successful in the other alpine based sports, especially. First year in the curling, here's the youngest player in the event getting the first medal, Rita Everson. And then the lead, what a performance by Cecil Loken. Second player getting the silver medal at his first Paralympic Games, the late Frederick Severson. And then the third player, Justine Sturdal, competing at his ninth Paralympic Games, the first medal that he's received. And then Rune Lawrenson, the skip, he gets his first Paralympic medal, his fourth appearance in the wheelchair curling event. He's played more games than anybody at the Paralympic Games. And nobody more deserving to be on that podium than him. This will cement Justine Sturdow and Rooney Lawrenson's position amongst the greatest of all time in curling. Won more medals than anybody at the World Championship, but to couple that with a Paralympic medal. What a career these two players have had. Colin Grahamslaw presenting the mascot, Secretary General of the WCF. And then there was Mr. Song Yeo Kim, IPC Governing Board member, presenting the silver medals. Your silver medalists, Norway. Gold medalists and Paralympic champions. Representing People's Republic of China. Gold medalist. People's Republic of China are win their first Paralympic medal ever. And it is gold. They've had an extraordinary championship week. It is capped off by this moment. A dream come true. Their alternate, Zhang Zhang. Their lead and emotional leader, Wang Meng. The hard throwing, super accurate, Leo Wei. The utility man, Chen Zhen Shin. And Wang Haidao, skip for Team China. Oh, it's real gold. <laughs> they, they do the traditional, put their teeth marks in those Beautiful medals. And Kate Kateness, President of the World Curling Federation, will deliver the mascots to these fantastic champions. She was
was instrumental in developing the sport of wheelchair curling. This has to be a moment for President Kate Ness. She will, she'll be as full of joy as anyone for Team China and these athletes. That is very fitting. People's Republic of China, Paralympic champions, gold medalists. What Ladies a and championship. The anthem of People's Republic of China. 여러분, 중국의 국가 연주가 있겠습니다. Paralympic Winter Games, gold for China, silver for Norway, and bronze for Canada. What an event it's been. throughout the curling world the players not only competitors but also great friends as well so much camaraderie between the teams yeah the Paralympic motto that spirit in motion this is the kind of thing that these events bring out just incredible athletic performances but with tons of sportsmanship and camaraderie Probably the first time that the the gold medal game players have seen the, uh, the Canadians who have won the bronze, so I want to congratulate them. Yeah, it's not just handshakes at the end of the game. It's uh, it's been hugs all week long. These athletes really are rooting for each other. They, they want to win so much, but they know that they are unique in, in the sporting world. 35 countries play the sport, 12 qualified for the right to contest here for these medals, and 
left standing. Team Canada, Team Norway, and Team China on top of the podium. It's been a beautiful week of curling. It's nice to see it uh, finishing up with these, with these greetings. Yeah, so congratulations as well for four years of hard work paying off and getting to the podium. So much respect between these teams. Wang Meng, she, uh, she might be having some tears of joy flowing for quite a while. She is going to be dehydrated. <laughs> Canada move off into the locker room to celebrate the greatest victory. Team China has seen at the Paralympic Games ever, regardless of sport. What an incredible moment. These Chinese athletes are going to be rock stars when they get back to, to China. The press will be all For over them. The heroes of Harbin. I like it. That could stick. Great job by all the volunteers as well this week in the red and grey jackets at the front there. Without them, these things just don't happen. So you, there you have it, a fantastic wheelchair curling event this week at the Pyeongchang 2018 Paralympic Winter Games. It all came down to an uh, extra end between China and Norway. Norway just couldn't quite make that last shot, but it was an extremely high performance game, exciting right to the death. China are your gold medalists, Norway silver and Canada bronze. China will look forward to defending their title in Beijing in 2022. Thanks for watching.